good morning, everybody. I'm very pleased to welcome you to this uh, symposium dedicated to uh, the 50th anniversary of Alfred Kessler's Nobel Prize. So we will have, uh, during the day, seven renowned uh, speakers. And at the end of the symposium, we will have uh, a, a recollection uh, of Kessler's uh, by two um, of his students, Marianne Bouchia and uh, Claude Quentanucci. So I think that uh, uh, every speaker will, uh, will say a few words about the um, Kessler's scientific activity and uh, how it is uh, um, now uh, seen in the 50 years later in the current research uh, activity of the, of the laboratory. So I think the best thing for me to do now is in this introduction is to uh, give a few and short uh, information on the life of Alfred Kessler. So Alfred Kessler is born in uh, 1902 in Alsace. At that time, Alsace was in uh, Germany, so it's very close to the frontier here. It was in Germany until uh, the, the end of the First War in 1918. So the double culture of Alfred Kessler, German and French, uh, is essential to understand his early commitment to the European cause, for example. Then, uh, in 1921, uh, he succeeded to enter to the very selective, uh, uh, very competitive uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure, where he started to be a student for, for four years. And then, as it was usual at that time, he made, after that, five years of high school teaching in various uh, towns, uh, Mulhouse, Colmar, and Bordeaux. And then, in Bordeaux, he started his research and uh, he's, he has made a thesis, as you can see here, in 1936, uh, where uh, Amy Cotton and Eugène Bloch were uh, his examiners. Then he went to Clermont-Ferrand, and at the end at uh, ENS, coming back to, at ENS in Paris. Uh, during this uh, period, so from 1940 to 1950s, he made researches on double resonance in atoms, so it's optical and radio frequency uh, excitation of atoms, uh, with Jean Brossel, which at that time was at the MIT in a postdoctoral position, and made some experiments on double resonance, and then they developed the concept of optical pumping. When Jean Brossel came back to, uh, to Paris, they decided to create a new laboratory at the ENS, uh, devoted to atomic spectroscopy, uh, and the name of the laboratory is uh, Laboratoire de Spectroscopie Hertzienne de l'ENS, meaning uh, 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 Laboratory on uh, Hertzian Spectroscopy. This was the name up to until 1994, uh, so 40 years later, when we decided to change the name of the lab uh, and call the lab uh, Laboratoire Kessler Brossel. So you can see a picture of uh, the lab. I think it's not a picture in uh, 1951, but a little bit later, a few years later, uh, where you see all the people in the lab, and you can see the kind of uh, apparatus which were used at that time uh, to, to, in the experiments. OK, so he obtained the Nobel Prize in 1966 for the discovery and uh, the development of optical methods for studying Hertzian resonances in atoms. And you can see here uh, the ceremony uh, in Stockholm. And here, all the lab in front of the building, uh, clear to, close to here uh, at Le Mont. He stopped his academic career in 1972, but he still came to the lab. And I had the chance to see him when I started my PhD uh, uh, in 92. Uh, unfortunately, a few years later, in, 94, in 84, uh, he died. And uh, we, the laboratory has uh, made the first uh, symposium, a three days symposium in 1985, one year later, one year after his death. Um, so uh, this is the second one. Uh, 
50 years after. So, of course, if you want to know more about the man, about the scientist, about his humanistic uh, actions, uh, please uh, visit uh, the Castle exhibition, which is very close from here at the entrance of the physics department. The exhibition is, is in French, sorry. Okay, so now perhaps I can say a few words about the legacy of Kessler works, at least for uh, the Laboratoire kessler Brussel. Of course, the uh, founding ideas of Kessler uh, had an, an essential impact on the development of the lab activity. For example, uh, a di direct consequence of his work is uh, the manipulation of atoms by light and all the domain of quantum gases, uh, which represent a, a very important activity in the lab, of course, with closed, closed current energy, but with many workers, uh, researchers in this domain. Uh, there is uh, now four groups working in this domain in the lab. Another activity which is important in the lab is uh, interaction of light and atoms in dense with dense and uh, uh, complex media. In particular, we use, in this, uh, part of this activity consists in using uh, resonance, magnetic resonance uh, and optical pumping to study quantum fluids and also to produce highly uh, polarized gas, such as helium gas, uh, for example, for uh, biomedical, uh, biological um, imagery. Another consequence of this research on the control of atomic states by uh, uh, light is, of course, metrology, where you use uh, this possibility to control uh, atoms and to perform very accurate spectroscopic measurements to uh, determine fundamental constants and to test theories such as quantum electrodynamics and other theories such as gravitation and so on. At last, the, uh, another uh, huge activity in the lab is related to quantum optics and quantum information and this kind of studies. Of course, it is perhaps not directly connected to the ideas of Kessler, but it proceeds on the same concepts. I mean, uh, it is, uh, at the, ba uh, the basis is, is uh, uh, f uh, deep understanding and interaction between light and matter where you want to control not the atomic state, but the light. So you can see here all the people, all the researchers in the lab. Actually, this is not all the researchers. I limited here to the senior researcher. So you can see that the lab has grown a lot since the beginning. Actually, uh, this picture shows the lab at three uh, important steps of its uh, history uh, for the Kessler, Kessler Nobel Prize, the Claude Quentin Energy Nobel Prize, and the Serge Roche Nobel Prize. And the uh, size of the lab uh, increased from 30 people to more than 150 people. OK, perhaps I'm stop here this aspect, and I would like just recall the program. There will be two sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Uh, I'm very pleased to introduce the two chairmen of these sessions, uh, Bill Phillips and uh, Serge Roche. As you know, both are Nobel uh, laureates. Uh, in 1997, for Bill uh, with Steve Chu and Claude Gantanuji, and in 2012 for, for Serge. And Bill Phillips is a professor at the National Institute of Standard and Technology. So um, before I end, let me thank the scientific committee who had made a huge work to, to, to organize and to prepare this, this conference. I am very happy that most of them are, are here today. I would like also to uh, thank the, the um, organizing committee and of course our sponsor. And I wish you a very nice uh, symposium. Thank you.